Well, the Federal Reserve, not surprising anyone today, leaving rates unchanged. But Janet Yellen did hint uh, that uh, they don't really need too much more convincing uh, because they think this is an economic juggernaut we're sitting on here. Of course, the ADP jobs report was anything but. It was a dud, just as a majority of all the economic data of late has come in below consensus. And already, the Atlanta Fed has lowered its fourth quarter GDP assumption to 2.3%. From yesterday, 2.7 percent. So let's talk about the true state of the economy and its impact on the election. Joining me now, Jeff DeWitt is back along with Shaw Galani. Shaw, you haven't been happy with this economy for a long time. Yeah. I'm not sure the disconnect with the Fed that's so excited about this amazing economy that's like a, you know. But what do you make of it? Particularly, the idea that they're going to take action on it. I don't think they're going to take much action because the Fed has always been moving their target. No matter what their target has been, they moved it, and they're going to move it again. They're talking about a December hike, and I think that, you know, the, the talking up of that December hike is very political because there's no, it's impossible for them to raise if we have volatility in the market because of this election. It's impossible. So they're talking it up as if they're going to do that because that's what they've told everybody. So there's no way they can raise. If they do, there's no reason really to do it. And if they do, the quarter of a point is going to do nothing for the economy. It's going to do nothing. It's going to maybe help some banks. But right. really, the economy is suffering and it's going to continue to suffer. You know, Jeff, I've done a lot of work. And one thing I've, I've, I've discovered going back to 1984 is that when, when the 90 days before the election, if the market is down, the incumbent party loses. The, the market was down 90 days before this election. And if the GDP is down, not how, mo how robust it is, but long, if it's down year over year, and at 2.3%, we might be in line or a little bit lower. These are two significant economic data points that have predicted the presidential outcome convincingly, uh, only missing once in the last 30 years. Well, and as you pointed out, you know, the jobs line is moving in the wrong direction right now. It's been a very weak recovery, which explains why the Fed has printed ten trillion dollars of new debt under president obama trying to to prop up the economy it's why the fed has stayed at effectively zero with rates for for seven years now and there and it's not working now the fed has no bullets left in their gun if we have to prop up the economy any further and what you're going to see i think we've seen as as mr trump has pointed out we've seen a, uh, seen a federal reserve that is playing politics what is, what is the trying trump, to uphold the market so what does the trump can't make of the idea that the market goes down every time he does well in the polls i mean is he offended by that or does he just think that these are the the fat cats down the lower in the lower canyons of manhattan who just want to protect their turf i disagree with that because i remember predicting back uh, many many months ago on fox business that when he won the primary when he secured the primary we'd hit new highs and we did hit new highs when he secured the primary so i think although let's be honest we've been hitting new highs for a long time <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, not... i mean we're talking about this recent anxiety it coincides with his poll numbers i mean is wall street worried for the wrong reasons yeah i think so there's there's you know no matter which candidate wins we're going to have some problems in that the fed is so disconnected from the actual numbers right. and from the fact that our debt has basically doubled right. under President Obama. He's done more than any other president combined. And Shaw, the, the, the I, risk of recession has got to be higher no matter who the next president is also. It, it is high. And if you look at the ADP numbers today, they weren't as, as nice as they looked up front. There's positive gains of 147,000 jobs in the private sector. However, if you take those apart, it's 165,000 gained, except there were 18,000 lost in terms of producing man and manufacturing right. construction jobs. Construction and so manufacturing. You had service, you had construction getting hammered. That's supposed to be down well 15,000 yeah. jobs. So you had, you know, the, the bulk of them were in service sector right. jobs. And this is one of the reasons that the economy is suffering, because you've got low-paying service jobs that are yeah. part-time jobs, and they're, no, they're not offering career opportunities. And that's what's driving this, that's what's driving this election. Ultimately, that's yes. what's driving this election. I think it's important, important right. to remember that Washington doesn't create jobs. Business people right. create jobs. But Washington, Washington can make it easier for businesses to create jobs. Yes. Or harder. Thanks a lot, guys. <laughs> Appreciate it.